Hi, I'm Sifu Andrew Platt at the Intensity Fitness Centre in uh, Manchester and today we're going to be looking at energy and putting it into the forms and movements. Now, um, to start this off, okay, this can be used in any of your internal martial arts. Um, I'm going to focus specifically on Chen Tai Chi, but it can be in any Tai Chi, it can be in any Shin Yi, it can be in any splashing hands or bag wire. It can even be done in your Qigong and your meditations, even sitting meditation. Now, it's important to start, to begin with, but uh, when we're looking at energy, uh, specifically uh, what, what we call qi, uh, which is found from the magnetic and electro, uh, like magnetic cycle in the body, um, that uh, we're not looking at energy using conscious energy and light and chakras, it's just uh, actual um, uh, energy that powers the physical body, and that's what qi is or what we're going to focus on chi. So, as we always say, that chi uh, follows the mind, um, so a lot of it is to do with visualisation. Now, obviously for some instances, um, for example breathing, the actual breathing process is a physical act, but gaining energy um, from the air and using it into chemical processes, which then get absorbed into the blood, um, which then we then focus through our mind into certain points of the body, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, there's two, methods, or a major difference we need to mention before we start is uh, we're going to be working quite a lot in the legs here. As you can see from this very quick diagram that I drew. Um, when you do seated meditation, our hewing point, our base point, is nearest the ground and therefore the centre of gravity. Now that's why the chakra system that we know well of is, um, and our uh, development of the microcosmic orbit, always focuses on here or Okay, from the, from the lower body to the upper body. We don't take account for the legs, and that's because we're in a seated posture. If you're doing this exercise standing, then obviously there's a big piece of the body linking the upper the body to the ground, and that's the legs. And that's where we need to really focus on, because that's the least talked about part um, of development. So, uh, let's start. So, when you're doing your form, and your physical movements, be in single cell movements and Tengun or Qigong or an entire form system, we need to, after the first development of biomechanics, so for example laying the pipe of a plumbing system. Now these pipes have already been connected and opened if you've developed the physical side properly. This is what goes through the pipes to enter the rest of the body. So this is the, the word, I always see it as um, you can see it as water, so similar to blood. You can see it as air, but also light. Now, there's different ways of visualizing this, and we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Um, so we're looking at energy, okay? Pure energy in the body and making it flow through the body into the muscles, but also flowing um, and linking it, not just as a separate entity, but to the physical form and the movement that you are practicing. So let's start at the bottom. So we're going to start with the heels, okay, so we can see from these two points, here and here, these are the heels of the body, not the toes, very important. So if you have the foot here, like this, this is the point we need to focus on, not the toes, but the heels. This is the centre of gravity the body is designed to, to put into the floor, not the toes, but pushing the weight back onto the heels. Now, when we lift the leg in the form, and if you can see from there, the foot stays flat, and it's the heel that is closest to the ground. It's always the heel, and that's where our main focus is today. All the balls of the feet do is stop you from falling forwards. Um, so during the form, the heel should always be on the ground, especially in stationary postures. So, looking at a glass of water, for example, all right? or a bottle, any kind of vessel. Your body is a vessel, let's say like a balloon. Yeah, it's not a rigid shape, it's a flexible shape and, it, and the energy fills the shape of the body. So the smaller the body, the less energy in there and the bigger the body, the more energy can be. So let's just take a glass for example. So we tip the water in from above, but we don't start at the top. We don't acknowledge the glass as being filled from the top down. The water hits the base and fills upwards like this. Bah, bah, bah. So as we feel energy, this is our level one. If you've ever seen, um, uh, heard of the, the Magnus of Java, and he explains about the um, 62 levels of building Nigong energy, the first level is to always fill 
the body full of energy and that's what we're doing we're concentrating we're filling not from here but actually from the ground up if we're sat meditating then this is the bottom but if we're stood up then our feet are the bottom and we must fill upwards we're packing it down and filling upwards so as we pour the water in downwards which is our energy from the breath and everything else it hits the bottom of the glass which is the feet and rises up and that's what i want you to visualize today now this could not just be water you could see it as air electric man um, energy light um, you know whatever you want but i use water because it's easy to explain so these two points obviously we have two and this is the center of gravity in the middle because if our feet were together then our center of gravity would be more here if we lean on the left leg then we have 70 30 90 10 if we shift weight. So when you shift postures here, for example, there's more energy here than there is there, but there's still energy in both. But our centre of gravity shifts. And that's what the difference is in the form. As we move the form, the legs change. We'll look at that in a second. So I want you to identify the heels. Now you might want to touch the heel point with your hand here, hit it, whatever, apply pressure. Feel. Now, during the form, I want you to stand. Nice stationary posture, your feet together, our feet shoulder width apart. Breathe. Breathe in through the nose and push down. Now, just like the glass, we're going to visualize the heels first. First point. It doesn't go down into the heels, it, it starts at the heels. Okay, obviously I, I, we're pushing the air down. Now, think about the heel point and expand it. Imagine the stomach as we breathe in and the lungs they expand and inflate and then we contract and breathe out. I want you to imagine the heels doing the same thing. Very, it doesn't actually physically do this but I want you to visualise it. So use your heels as your stomach area. You breathe in and expand and then breathe out and contract. Now this will give you the feeling and the actual uh, neurological method of linking in the energy into this point of the heel and pushing it down and working here just like we do in the palms in the future. So once you've done that, do that maybe 10 breaths, 100 breaths in your sequence. Um, once you can do it all the way through your form or system easily, then move on to the next stage. So the next stage here, we go up into the knees and into the hewing point here. Okay, to this point. Now this is our centre of gravity here, right through this centre of human point. It's found in between the anus and the genitalia, and it's our base point, our gravity point. This is our first chakra. It's good to be aware that there is two other chakras here, in the knees as well, which give the effect of being here and here. Okay, but they're actually in the body, not in this space in between. So this hue in point is our first one attached to the main body. So as we breathe from the heels, we expand the heels, and now we're expanding in the legs, not just from there to there, but actually inside the legs. I want you to breathe in and expand all the body up to the hue in point in one breath. So to begin with, the breath would be from there in, and up. So we start here, we breathe in, and on the complete in breath, you should have stopped here. And all this is contracted, uh, expanded, full of oxygen, air, light, water. Breathe out and contract downwards. Squeeze it out. Don't just let it like this. Really feel it all contract. Not muscular, but in volume. So the next time, add this in, five, ten breaths, whatever, before you start. Then we move up into the energy centre here, the Dantian, okay, centre cauldron, energy generation here in the stomach. So again now, you breathe in, and we're not breathing down in, we breathe in from the heels, expand the legs, expand the hewing point, and the breath should stop here. Complete in-breath at the Dantian point. Now you don't need to hold it, just make sure it's fully expanded. Then breathe out and contract 
all the way down into the heels. Full body. Do that again five, ten times. Next movement. Then we go up here into the solar plexus. Okay, we're going through here. So again, breathe in from the heels. Now the in-breath should finish. Expansion here. Solar plexus. And then breathe out, contract. All the way down. Okay, because if we pour a glass of water out, it empties from the top down. So we empty down. Then we go to the heart here. All the way up. Expansion, breath in, stop, contraction, empty, all the way down. And then again, all the way up, into the throat, contraction down, finally up, breathe in, see how the breath is getting longer because it has to travel further, so if your breath takes longer, or you move up slightly quicker in your method of expansion contraction. But you can't have fully breathed in here and then carry on. You must stop here and then breathe out. We've got two more points. We're going to go straight to the top here in terms of biomechanics. So straight up into the top here. Boom. So breathe in. Expand the whole body now. Whole body should be expanding and contracting. Whole body from heels all the way down up to the crown and then breathe out, contract and the level of water drops. You don't drop, just the level inside down to the ground, empty. Now repeat this process until it becomes natural. Now this idea of this orbit filling is a full body exercise. We're not doing the, um, is a much more in detail method. One which has the arms, we're not looking at the arms today. And there's another one which orbits it. Up, down, up the back, down the front. Up the front of the legs and so on. We're just looking at a total body, nice and simple. Expansion, contraction. The whole body internally, inside the skin. Now this generates energy and packs it into the whole body. So once you can do this, this is, um, this is a level two of the um, Java system, supposedly, of uh, being able to move chi from the body. But instead of moving it to one place, we're actually filling the whole body and contracting boom, into one space, using the whole body as a pump. Okay, expansion, contraction. Now when you do this in your form, this is the interesting part, it's easy to do stood in one place or sit down. When you do your form, this changes the feeling of the form. So for example, if I turn here and fully twist into the perfect posture of the form here, for example, this part of the body is contracted muscularly. So when you breathe in and expand, you can't actually expand the right side, you can only expand the left side. So if you imagine a balloon blowing into a balloon, if you pinch two sides of the balloon together and blow into it, it will expand outwards this way. Yeah. So this is the process of the body. So we're contracting the left side, which means all the energy in the body can push to the left in opposite. So we're screwing to the right here so we can contract and expand in the left side as we breathe. Just hold that posture, that stretch, and expand and contract. Now this works differently. If you're tight here, then this will be stretched out and you'll be able to only expand and contract on the right. So it's different for different people. But generally as a whole, that side should be able to expand and contract on the left side of the kidney. We're forcing the energy and packing it into the right side. This can be seen also in this position where we dish and arch the back this way. So in this one, for example, here and here, we're contracting the front here, which means when we breathe in, we can't actually expand and contract from the front side, the front chain. It has to be from the back. So all the back opens up and the channels open up and the energy can flow up the rear chain. Then we close that off, we contract, pinch it together, 
Open the front. Now, as we breathe and expand the whole body, we have no choice but to expand and contract the front part of the body, the front portion. So we can see how the movement dictates which channels and which parts of the body become open and closed with energy through the same breathing technique. We're not changing the breathing technique, we're keeping the breathing, body breathing technique open and the same, but the technique of the movement and the body mechanics dictates the flow of energy through natural uh, blockage, unblockage of channels and pipes, for example. It'd be like in a, in a plumbing system, if you block off certain um, taps, then the water has to flow a different way, but it must always flow, and that's what we're doing. But you have to work from the bottom up before we come down. Um, so very brief description, there's, there's so much you can go into this, and I must say just practice and you can't really get the idea of it until you can get the whole idea of body breathing and the feeling. You must feel. It's the difference between knowing how it works and feeling how it works. And you must feel it and you must visualise it. And this will give you very powerful techniques in the future. Because the more energy you have, the more um, material or force or energy you have on the later levels to work with. So if you have less material to work with, you'll have smaller results. If you have a greater amount of power and energy, then you have more material to work with in the future for greater results. So it's a very step-by-step -step process. Um, so take your time, enjoy, try and practice, um, and let me know what you think. Uh, this is Sifu Andrew Platt of the Intensity Fitness Centre of Nine Cauldron Alchemist. Um, so please enjoy and continue training. Thank you.